it out and then I'll grind down these to the side and then I was just about to say the uh, tripod's almost acting like a rudimentary steady cam until I kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to make one of those because the steady cam part is really easy to do. It's just a counterweight, so that's fun. Actually, I saw on Thingiverse a uh, laser cut design for a steady cam. Really? So, yeah, you just laser cut out the parts okay. and, and then put it together. And it's. Um, it was used to the camera. Well, you have to put on a weight on it. Okay. But it's kind of like the. I don't know if you've seen the Merlin steady cam design. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the. You have a handle and then the camera sits there. Right. And then there's a, a swooping arm with it. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, you can move like that and the camera will always be okay. in the same spot. So it's not as extensive as a full-blown steady cam, right? But you don't have to have the shoulder. <laughs> well, actually, I, I was just thinking about the ones where they have the, the that you make out of pipe and they just have it so it just kind of floats. But they might have a gimbal right here, you know, and then a counterweight, and it just so they can go up or down or whatever. And just yeah, I've seen those too. Those are pretty simple to make, but you know, realistically speaking, we probably need one just to film stuff like yeah. this. Yeah, and I'm. <laughs> it's amazing that I can do as much fine detail service, not soldering, with how much my hand moves around. Yep. Yep. I'm getting to that point too. Pretty much on any type of welding. I mean, you're watching. If you're watching me, I try to I try to brace my arm just to get these welds to go the way they are. I think some of the blobbiness here though is just the, it's just the, the blob. It can't be me, right? No, I can't really that. Alright, actually I don't think I need to have it on the table to do this song. I think we can just go ahead. Right, because it's already tacked there. So. It's tacked and actually these work pretty good. So when you grind them down, you can see how much penetration you have. You go through here and you see that it's still on both sides of the well, all the way down, it's actually going in penetrating. So try to give a shot of that. Yeah. Okay, so I mean for for a spot weld that's not bad. So but you're just looking to kind of see, make sure that it's gonna hold in place and that's all it's really there for. The idea though is it's still weak enough that at some point if you grind it down like this, if you need to reposition it, it's not that hard to cut it off. Okay. Okay. See this one here? This one I didn't get enough penetration on. So you see it split right there as soon as I ground down to it. Of course that might have been the clamping that we just did on the table too. Okay, yeah. I, I can see it. I don't know if the camera can. But okay. I don't think get any closer than that. Uh, if I come at it at an angle, oh yeah, you can t definitely see it there. Yep. So. Yep. But that's what spot welds are designed to do. They kind of hold it in place until you get a chance to put a full weld on it. Well, those aren't great welds, but they're alright. It's better looking than my welds typically are. So. Well, here's how you really tell it on the back side. Inside there, you can see where it burned all the way through. You got the heat mark all the way across, uh -huh. and that says you're getting pen uh, penetration into the other side of the metal. If it was a cold weld, this side here would have almost no heat mark on the inside at all. Okay. Okay. And that's really kind of one of the one of the ways. Like this one's a really good one. I don't know if you can see in there, but see how it's all discolored all the way through. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can even see where it's kind of bubbled through. That means we got oh yeah 100 percent penetration all the way through that side. Yeah, you can see that there. Yep. So, molding 101. Get the
probably not support that one. To basically trust the long for flush on the back side so we get these squares on here, yeah, we're probably going to do enough. So we're just going to send our cap and put that way up. So we're going to have to trust that this is going to be enough in the front. Otherwise, I need to cut all the balls and we're doing it. Yeah. The other thing I have to try to remember is to always shut off the gas because there's been a couple tanks that I've lost because I didn't turn it off when it was done. And oh, yeah. For basically fortunately, it was the, the smaller tank over there, not that big one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I usually always remember turning it off. Do you, do you actually open this all the way or do you just give it a crack? Um, I usually open it until the, meet, the high pressure meter goes up. Okay, because I don't know what the rule is for, uh, for argon. Did you say there's still gas? Oh, there's gas. Okay. Yeah, I turned it off and I use it when I, when I turn gas off. I also undo this and open it up so that it, uh, once you release the pressure from here, mm -hmm. and then you release this thing all the way out, so that, uh, once it hits zero, it drops down, then you release this so there's no pressure on the diaphragm. The right. diaphragm lasts longer. We do that with the subunit and the oxygen. I've got tanks that are tanks and regulated flashing light. Regulators were actually new, but my original tanks and regulators were with my dad's, and he had those for like 40 years mm -hmm. before I finally said, you know, I can't see how they're doing these things like just need some new questions.
it seems to be running off now once we do the new well that's it. Smaller magnets if uh, I think might, might work better.
Okay. Just tack on to the frame here so when I put the weight on it, then I can go ahead and I can run the inside. See what I got. It's not even attached. Yeah. So I need to get enough heat in there to really just melt it. That one. That one looks a bit better. Yeah. This is probably just the, this weird angle that I'm working at right now. It's, a, it's absorbing all the heat from the lower temperature on the on the thing. So I'll go back and do the same thing on this side now. Twitchy video now because I'm holding the camera. Okay. That's probably okay.
frames of yeah. So I'm just going to find it. Yeah, you look at all of it. having this 64 gig card. <laughs> yeah, we should get some extra stuff out, right? Yeah. Well, it sucked because I was doing video before and then the card, the card would fill up. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I'd have to go and up, download it off to my laptop and then go back to what I was doing. Yeah, that's kind of hard to do. That's probably one reason that I don't like doing video because I don't want to take and do stuff at the same time. It's hard. Yeah. You yeah, you really, well, one, you have to have someone that's actually running the camera, and then, then it's manageable.
how it's Oh, yeah. When I was loading up the D20, I had the halogen on me, and it was yeah, July, and I didn't have the swamp cooler, so I was, oh, and I was sick at the time, too. So I was just sweating <laughs> like crazy. It's like being in the swamp. I did one down and one up, but that's not how it happened. It was actually crossing over, and what happened was the weld bead dripped down, and then the other one didn't connect back up. So I'm going to hit it right in the middle just to make sure that I get that. One thing is, I always find welding so satisfying. Of a, it's incredibly of satisfying. Because this is actually like you're putting something together, you get to see it go. And yeah, and you're working with you know, high amperage, you're melt, melting weld metal together. And yep. Let me. Don't breathe. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, it's going to take forever. So, okay. So, uh, they're right over here. Oh yeah, that makes that a lot easier. A lot easier. Can't hold these on, get pull them off the magnets. I'm pretty happy with the purchase. For 150 bucks? Yeah. Jeez. Can't get it there cheaper than that. You're probably giving it Boy, the guy had it in his garage for you know a couple of years. His kids would run around on it every once in a while. <laughs> More of a toy than mine. Well, I mean, his father died, so yeah. He didn't need it. That's kind of how these things work. I think that's 18 gauge and the uh, uh, box tube is uh, 16 gauge. It's not going to come off because the weight's all been bearing down. So unless it bounces or sometimes it lifts the whole thing up from the actual case, yeah. you'll ever have a problem with it. I'm glad I fixed that today. <laughs> Chris, we well, that and Mark finally got his yeah. spot really going. Although I, st I still have to replumb the water to it because uh, I, I reuse the uh, connectors and it drips a bit.
Excellent. Still smoking. <laughs> Don't breathe the smoke, it'll kill you. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I think this will hold. It's not the prettiest world in the world, but there's salt in there. They're generally better looking than high walls, but I need more practice. It's pretty solid. It'll handle over 300 pounds, I think. Yeah, worst comes to worst is if you've got the 300 pounds on it and take it to a wonderful test run, like a day of running around, just check the wells and see if any can crack. Mm -hmm. If they have, then we'll have to go back and reinforce. But I think, I think it's probably set for you. Well, it's not like it's going to be going off roading or anything. It's, <laughs> it's going to be driving around a, a casino for DEF CON. And right. Can you get all those sensors on it so you can pick up people's email addresses and phone numbers? We could do that. Good Google does it. How's they got to do as plug guys? Oh, we're sorry, we didn't know we were doing that. Just can't do it on the hardware there because that only has 192k variety. So. Come on, you're, you can figure out how to program that. 192k? Yeah, that's. Jeez. It's about enough to run away. Well, you can run Unix. <laughs> Space Invaders, maybe? Well, uh, you, you only have a serial console, too. So. <laughs> uh, Colin said, I think it was Colin, yeah, Colin said he's got a, one of the old style terminals. So yeah. if you want to put a little. So he has an extra one? I think he said he has an extra one. Because I have one. Okay. Uh, but. We probably it would be nice to have like more than one, so you know, mm -hmm. actually have like multiple people using multiple terminals. Um, well, I although to boot it right now, we have to. There's a, a program for the PC that actually mm -hmm. basically bootstraps the uh, the PC enough so it can load the OS from the FM drive. So oh, interesting. Okay. So it's. Basically, it comes up and it's in the, uh, like a hex uh, debugger mode, and so you can type in an address of memory, and then you type in what you want that to set it to, right. and you hit enter, and then it res responds with what the, the address of memory is. And then you type okay. in the next address of memory. <laughs> so doing it by hand is a pain. It's right. possible. Well, it's and I was tempted to do it, but ah. it's a lot of like that. Well, I was thinking because you were saying you want to put the terminal on top, like a head, and put like, the ASCII bases on it. Yeah. So that would be kind of interesting. Although that will probably drive with, like, I don't know, you know a netbook or something. But mm, yeah, probably. Can you make it so the head turns around and it just turns and then the body turns around with it? That might be possible. That's another time we have. And you only got uh, 25 days. Right. If I can get it up and running where it can drive around via remote control, then that, that, that uh, solves the, the goal. Mm -hmm. then, then it's getting the display on the top of it to do a little make some ground effects lighting and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. 
stuff down here and then a whole light effect at the bottom. I know what that would look like. Well, we're thinking the, uh, the strips from uh, Unifruit, because mm -hmm. you can do it individually and dress them up so you can have a change of color. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. We, you have it, if you, you know, have it so the face does an angry look and then all right. the lights turn red. <laughs> you were going to try uh, to widen out the tires that you can use? Um, that might be, if we had run into problems where it's not stable, mm -hmm. but it seemed, it seemed fairly stable side to side. So. So I was looking at these, this is that part of my two box. Mm -hmm. So I got two more exactly like this, so all that I do is a little bit little piece on three and it's done. See, now that's more comfortable looking. Yeah, it's a bit better than <laughs> before. See, now you can just stick your up on it and stick whatever you want. Of course, the motors are, well, they don't have the batteries that they drive. Right. Or they're in there. Yes. Man, you can make that into a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, it can be. <laughs> I wish the wheelchair had something. That's nice because you can turn in stone radius. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about making these out of a piece of uh, probably 14 gauge steel and a nut. And to do the same thing, I was just saying that we could put the piece into a C-clamp and then go ahead and tighten it down so the nut would tighten down to where this extension is right here. And then you just take the, uh, the uh, MIG welder and tackle it on this side and on this side. And then once you've got those nice and solid with a little extra heat, tack here and here and that would make the captured nut. That should there. be pretty easy to do. I think so. And then the worst case scenario you have is if it gets too blobby with the material, you would just have to grind it down a little bit so that it would fit into that slot. Yeah. yeah. But you would also know that it's perfectly square. And that means that as soon as this goes in here, the bolt's not gonna be looking like it's cross-eyed like that. It'll just go in straight. Right, that's kind of important, so. <laughs> just a little bit. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks for uh, your help. You're welcome. That was fun. Awesome project. This is going to be great when it's done. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is kind of this type of thing is the reason why I, you know, wanted to get a hackerspace started in, in Vegas. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Basically, yeah, it's you know doing this, coming over to some 
to the you know the hacker space and grinding and welding and stuff and you know, having fun. So uh, let me know when you get to electronics. I want to watch you how you put all that part together. I'm talk about the circuits that you need for the uh, remote control. And, uh, is it going to be like a, a an XP wireless or do you have some other? I haven't made up my mind yet on that. So really cheap is you know you grab a, a remote control car and you know just hack it. Uh, uh, more hacker-ish might be taking some XPs or uh, only thing with XPs you might run into like interference with uh, sort of. But you run into that with the RC cars too, aren't you? Yeah, probably. The other thing, the only thing that's nice about the XPs is you have distance. I mean, you could be what 50, 80 yards away. Right. Wouldn't it, that would work better. But I mean, do you need to be that far away? No, you should. I'm not gonna like you know drive it a hundred six feet away. <laughs> or maybe I will. That might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> then you're gonna have to have some bump sensors and things like that so it doesn't yeah. run over somebody. Cool, this is gonna be cool for DEF CON. Can't wait to see it finish. Yeah. Alright, so that's it for uh, today. I'm Crux with SinShop. And I'm Bill. So we'll see you in the next installment. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out over at sinshop.org and have fun. <laughs>